mushrooms, mate. So I think this here is one of the mushrooms we're looking for. It looks like some really weird sort of poo. Feeling pretty chuffed. I got one. <laughs> so one of the things I'm always worried about is that if I go off the path I'm on, am I going to miss a mushroom? And these ones, I've not looked for these ones before, but they're really difficult to spot. They're like brown, sort of like weird pooey type things. And I'm just worried that I'm going to miss one. These mushrooms, you have to boil them three times to get the poison out, and then they're all right for eating. Oh, look at that! That thing is ugly. My God! <laughs> Hello, my precious. Chop, chop, chop. So if they get exposed to the sun too long, they go black. Like they get cooked. Like this fella in here. Turns into wood, basically. Damn, cuz, it's a hard life. Seen people like that on the beach. This is Alina's hole. How did you do it? Think like a mushroom. Ah! <laughs> Damn! What the hell? Look at that big boy. Chip cha! Yeah. So satisfying. We're getting to that point where, like, now that is what I'm talking about. The floodgates have been opened. This is way more fun than it should be. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> what the fuck is this thing? It's not that good. It's brain. It's like, yeah. A really ugly brain. I think I hit another mother load. Holy shit. Look at these bastards. See, apparently these don't even taste that good. Well, at least compared to guileness, but um, a hobby is a hobby, right? So if you can eat it, maybe after two or three boils, it's worth it. And I never even liked mushrooms growing up. Freaking hated them. But something about this experience brings me closer together with mushrooms. All right, you look after those mushrooms, okay? Bye. This is the sort of shit you don't want on your food. So we're at that stage now where I've got to boil these mushrooms three times. And there's a lot of them. But it's quite interesting because I was told there is no real flavor to these mushrooms. They're a bit sort of like, eh. Which makes me wonder, with uh, the boiling process, are we just boiling away the flavor? I'm not going to risk myself uh, in terms of like not boiling this correctly to get the, the poison away or the toxicity away. But it does make me wonder, was the person who found out that these were toxic eating the best mushroom of their life. So as you can see here, they're uh, cooking away. You gotta bring them up to a boil, so we're getting close. Here's first round, here's everything that's been unboiled. So eventually all this has to go back through two more times. Oh, castanotic. We've got the last amount of boiling and they shrink down quite a lot, as you can see, but um, I was reading on this Norwegian website that says that you only need to boil them for around about 10 minutes. And I passed this information on and then uh, I was told that's why the uh, Norwegians are so f***ed up. <laughs> I don't think that is true. I like Norwegians and I like Norway. But I will be boiling these for about 30 minutes total. So I'm going to do round one and then clear everything out. Now that they're a bit smaller I can do it I think all in one batch and bring it to a boil and then keep that on for 10 minutes until we get some foam and then basically just do it like rice until the water runs clear. I don't know what I'm doing, but they're gonna get fried up a bit later anyway, so hopefully the results are nice, because this is a lot of work. We're gonna rinse them as well and then wring them out before the next boil, apparently. I'm getting advice left, right and center. 
So here I've got um, chuck eye. I've not worked with this meat before, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to section it off into steaks and I'm going to sous vide it and then slap it on the griddle and get an amazing sear. Apparently it's quite tender, but um, maybe not so um, refined as a normal ribeye. So I've got the sous vide going here and then I've got the uh, mushrooms on their final, final boil here. Um, hopefully I've done it right. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make a salsa out of those with a bit of dill, some chives, a bit of raw garlic, it's a bit of vinegar, sort of like a riff on a chimichurri but like well, well deep into the Baltics, like an Argentinian's got lost. Um, but that's all going to get done on the, where is it, the griddle? So I can sort of see the, the, the slotted spoon beneath the uh, water here, so I'm going to call this done. So these mushrooms are fairly inconsistently sized, so I gave them a bit of a chop just to get them sort of a rough sort of similar texture and then I laid them down on a bit of oil on the razor griddle. And they look and smell delicious now. Adding a little bit of salt actually brings out the flavour quite a lot and there is flavour. So chopped up a bit of garlic about, and most of it went to go with the mushrooms. The other half is going to go for a little bit of a salsa. Chopped up an onion, and that goes down with the mushrooms too. And finally, some chives. So wild chives, a little blob of uh, raw honey here. And to it, got some freshly squeezed apple juice. Go in there. Mash up the potato with his masher thing. So I oiled up the griddle and got a good sizzle going. Now sous vide and griddling is a match made in heaven. The whole point of this was to try and create some flavors that would both echo and contrast each other. So the steak and the mushrooms go together, but then the steak contrasts with the sweet flavors. Yeah. Oh, yes. So this is what came of it. Pretty happy. I mean, everything was done outdoors. I mean, a slight cheat though, using sous vide, but should be delicious. Tender as, man. Mm-hmm, the mushrooms coming through. Slight touch of honey in there and just a little bit of apple. Probably could have done with like a more base herb in it, like a rosemary, but I forgot. But for what it is, it tastes pretty damn good. Mixed method, way to go.